We're going to run through the modeling aspects of the Temperature Control Lab. Come to this page right here, and you'll see if you come down to the uh, step one, we'll see the dynamic modeling link. And so visiting that, we're going to talk about how to derive a nonlinear transient model from an energy balance. Also, we'll fit a first order plus dead time, or we could also do a second order system as well. So let's just see how the first order and the nonlinear transient model compare to the transient lab data. So first of all, just understanding the system, we have the two actuators, the two heaters, and two temperature sensors. We're just going to use the one temperature sensor and one um, heater as well. So we're just going to use number one. And we want to try to create a model of these. Uh, so here's our heater here on the left. And that is uh, you know, modeled, in this case, with COMSOL, just to see the heat source for the FET, um, the field effect trans transistor uh, that is turned on. And you can see the heat dissipating to the heat sink, the fins there. OK, and then we have some information about that device. For example, steel has a heat capacity of 500 joules per kilogram Kelvin. And the surface area of that uh, finned transistor is about 12 centimeters squared. Uh, quiescent air heat transfer coefficient is about 10 watts per meter squared Kelvin. And a little bit of other information that's here in this table. OK, so what we want to do is create a dynamic model of the response between the power input to the transistor and the temperature sensed by the uh, thermistor, the temperature sensor. And we'll use an energy balance to start the derivation. So let me just, um, from there, I'll just go ahead and take it from here. And, and um, let's just go ahead and start with this and then expand it. So we have the change in enthalpy on the left, where enthalpy equals mc sub p. And then we have, uh, in this case, it's going to be t minus t reference. And then if I take the derivative of enthalpy with respect to time, and then I have a the summation of all the enthalpy terms coming in, minus a summation of all the enthalpy terms leaving, plus any heat that's added. OK, and then I'm going to substitute that in there. And then that's going to give me, uh, if mass and heat capacity are constant, then I have uh, dt dt, and then minus dt ref uh, dt, and the reference temperature, if that's constant, that's 0. So that's how we get this term on the left. And then if we want to expand the terms on the right, we can have, uh, you know, for example, this is convection. OK, oops, uh, let me close this. OK, so this is uh, convection. And then this is the radiative heat transfer. Heat transferred. OK, and then we have, finally, we have the heater input. So any terms that are going to be adding to the temperature. Uh, so for example, if the ambient air, uh, the infinity temperature is greater than the temperature of the device, then we'd expect the temperature to increase. The slope would be positive. Uh, for example, if you're in outer space and you're at 4 Kelvin background, uh, you know, temperature there, then you might cool down, okay? Because this is going to be very low. Uh, this term is going to be negative, and that's going to cause this to go down, the accumulation term on the left. So there's our energy balance, and we just want to put that into code now, okay? So we have a little bit of information. Additionally, emissivity, you can assume 0.9. There's a Stefan Boltzmann constant right there for the sigma value. And the Q value can go between the 0 and 100%. So we're going to use an alpha factor to relate the 0 to 100% to how many watts are output. So all of these are kind of unknown parameters. We're going to just do our best in this exercise to put our best guesses in there and just see how it predicts with the real temperature. OK, and there's a video there for MATLAB and Simulink. But I'm going to go down to the Python modeling. What we want to do is we want to simulate this. And so, for example, that might be our measured temperature right there. And then we have our energy balance that we just derived. That would be this uh, black line right here. 
and then our first order plus dead time model. Okay, so you want to come up with an FOPDT, that's the green dashed line. And one of the things that I'm doing to keep track of how well the models predict is plot the cumulative error. So I just, at every second, I take the absolute value of the temperature difference between the measured and the model values, and I just add those up as it goes. So the one that has the lowest value is the one that is predicting best over the whole range. In this case, I just did a heater on to 80% for about uh, 390 seconds, and then turned it off again. So you can see it heating up and then cooling down. So let's go ahead and just, uh, I'll show this in Simulink and also in Python. And um, let me go ahead and just run the Python code, just because it'll take a little bit of time to run. And uh, this is going to be available with the initial things that you downloaded. Just go to test models and open that up. I'm going to use the IDLE editor and then I'm going to select run and run module. And this is going to open up a plot and it will show me connecting to the Arduino. And then it's going to have the uh, measured and model values. You'll see this kind of an animated fashion as it predicts. Now watch the middle one as you have the accumulated. Uh, so right now they're about tied. Um, but you know, as it, the heater turns on and it starts heating up, we might see one of them become uh, you know, more of a clear winner here in terms of uh, which one is predicting better than the other. Okay. Um, okay, so let's see if, uh, you know, this is just going to continue on. And so let's just go ahead and just watch it uh, a little bit. We'll uh, go over and continue, um, you know, some of our, uh, the MATLAB and the code discussion as well here. Okay, so I've got to kind of move this out of the way because uh, it's just going to continue updating and showing. Okay, I'll just leave that down here at the bottom for us. Okay, so that's just going to come and interfere with us. That's okay. I'll go ahead and just um, come over here and let's go to the source code. Okay, so I'll move this right over here. Okay, and uh, let's go to the source code for the thing that we're running right now. Uh, so we have this, uh, we just import the TC Lab. That's available in the downloads. It's just tclab.py. It's already included in there in the directory. And then we have our first order plus dead time model. Now I just put some uh, guess values in here, but if you do a step test from earlier, you can get maybe better values of KP, Tau P, and Theta P. And so you just put them in here and then it will produce this uh, plot. It'll produce the green dashed line for you. Now the other thing you need to put in is your are your steady state values. In this case, I just assume 23 degrees, that's an ambient temperature, uh, and then a heater value of zero. So it's a very important for FOPDT models to put that in. Okay, and then we go on to the energy balance. And you can actually um, you know, go in and refine this energy balance if you'd like to try to improve the predictions. Um, now you'll see it, it just started trending down a little bit. It's because I turned off the heater. I have some steps, some different steps I'm going to input in there. The next one, it's going to go for about 100 seconds with it off. And then it's going to go to, I think, a, a higher, like 90% heater output. Okay, so that's just what I'm doing with the uh, Python right now. We're just kind of tracking it, see how well it's predicting. Okay, so... Um, and it looked like it just kind of dropped out there for a second. I wonder what happened. Maybe it's because I was moving it and it uh, didn't like that. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, here are the, here's the energy balance that we just talked about. Uh, here is the, you know, just rearrange. So the derivative term is on the left. We just had to divide through by m c sub p. And then we have, uh, here we have the, this is the convection, okay, convection, and then this is the radiative heat transfer, 
And then here's our heater input. So you can come in here and adjust, uh, you know, any of these parameters there, FOPDT or uh, these parameters right here. The ones that I would suggest that you modify are, you know, maybe this heat transfer coefficient right there. Uh, I think the mass is pretty accurate. The heat capacity is fairly accurate as well. Uh, and then the alpha value. Uh, the alpha value might be one that uh, isn't quite accurate. You may need to... Uh, modify that one as well. Okay, so heat transfer coefficient and the alpha value, the percentage heater to the number amount of watts that you have. Okay, and um, okay, so there is, there's there are the two models. Uh, just going down through the code, I'll just walk through that. We have a little bit of time just because um, you know, I'm explaining it here uh, as as this is running. Um, so we have, I just turned on the LED and we'll run for 10 minutes. You can adjust that as well. I'm, I say I'm going to go, uh, you know, 600 uh, times through this loop. I just run time is 10 minutes times 60. And then, um, okay. And then I've got, uh, let's see, uh, I'm just dimensioning some arrays just to store some things. We'll use the set point later. We don't really need it right now, but we'll use that later for uh, the controller. And then we have uh, temperature one. That's just where we're going to store the temperature one values. And then likewise, the same thing for temperature two. We really don't need temperature two for this one either. Okay, and then we have our predictions as well. This is our energy balance model right here. And then our uh, prediction for our linear model, or FOPDT model, this is our second one. Uh, and then here's where I set up the impulse. So here's where I turned it on to 50 for a period of time. And then I turned it on to 90. Okay, you can see 90 there. And then the next step is going to be 70. So this is going to go on for 10 minutes uh, with these steps. And we're just going to watch it, uh, you know, as it predicts. And then we have our uh, running the main loop. We're just going to print the initial values right there just to give a zero time value. What is the initial ambient uh, temperature? And then we'll create our plot. And I added these two little things just so we can have this real time plot. And then in this main loop, uh, we're going to go around and I'll put in the try here just so if you do control C, you can terminate it early and it'll gracefully stop your program, write your file, stuff like that. But um, that's just a uh, uh, practice. Uh, you'll see down here in the accept. Okay, so that's if it has an error, then it's going to turn off the heaters and then close the Arduino connection and save a text file for you. Okay, and then also if you do a keyboard interrupt like a control C, then it'll do the same thing. Okay, so it just catches those. If at any point in the loop you're tired of waiting for it to finish, you can just control C and it will write your data file. Okay, this first part right here is just to uh, sleep for a, uh, whatever you didn't use down here. Okay, this was the delta T down there. And whatever you didn't use, then uh, sleep for that amount of time. Okay, and then it'll continue on. So this enforces us to have one second, uh, one second cycles. So if you want to have it faster, just change this sleep max right here. Okay, and then we're just going to record some of the times right there. Um, we'll read the temperatures right here. Uh, this is the command to read temperature one. That's the one that's important here. And then with these three lines of code, we're simulating the, uh, the energy balance. And in this case, we have uh, the accumulative the cumulative air. We're adding it to the prior one. And then we add in the absolute value of the temperature uh, predicted minus temperature one. And then we're also going to do the FOPDT model. Now you'll notice here is my KP. There's a theta P and the tau p is right up here. So those are the three parameters. Those are the only uh, lines that I need to calculate the FOPDT model. And then I also likewise I have an error that I'm accumulating, adding in the prior one plus the absolute value of the difference. 
Okay, here's the heater output for the next cycle. Okay, it's going to pause for that amount of time and then it'll print a line. Okay, and then here's the plot that I'm generating. You can modify this if you want. For, so for example, if you just wanted to get rid of temperature 2, you say, hey, I'm not doing anything with temperature 2 right now. You could delete that line. This is the uh, air plot right there. And then here's my here are my heaters right there. And the rest of it is just to make the plots look nice. Okay, so that's it for this script. It's just going through, um, calculating the model predictions, recording some temperatures. The main things are you want to always read the temperatures every cycle. And then you want to simulate the energy balance and simulate your first order plus dead time model. And the rest of it is just kind of uh, the infrastructure that goes around it to help you plot and visualize the results. Okay, so let's just go ahead and bring this back up. Okay, so you can see the heater output there, and you can see how it's predicting. So for our next exercise, the next uh, part of this lab, we're going to try to adjust the parameters of our model to better fit some of the data. So you can see some gaps. Uh, you can see especially where that slope is pretty steep on the cumulative air, that we have some gaps. So we're not exactly predicting our temperature response and we also have some things like some you know just in this region we have some noise um, and so you can see that uh, you know you might even have some uh, you know just the device itself might have some noise or other things that uh, cause some error that are very difficult to model but we're going to try to improve the you know the predictions there it looks like the first order plus dead time model is winning right now Cumulative error is only about 1,500, whereas the cumulative error for the energy balance is about 2,000. So the difference really between the cumulative error and uh, you know the energy balance and the linear model uh, for, with first principles models, we might do better about extrapolating into regions where you know you um, you know it. You don't have good training data if it's a very nonlinear model. The energy balance is going to do better. But in this case, it looks like the first order plus dead time model did a little bit better. Okay, so that's it for for this. Um, hopefully, this helps a little bit to explain some of the code and what we're doing with these with these models.